What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. The Auto Shop Life, hanging out with me, Jim, JRC54. So you guys can see, I'm standing in front of 2020 Jeep Gladiator. This is actually the second time this guy's uh, had it here at the shop. First one we did a uh, aftermarket grill on it. Seems like a nice truck. I did catch these at the uh, auto show a few years back. You know, it's not like 2020s and newer cars come to my shop all the time. But running through it, I still got mixed feelings about it. You know, I like the body style. You know, they probably could have put a better powertrain in it and all that stuff. But customer wants to do a leveling kit. He's going to get some 33s for it. We're going to find out if 33s fit with just a leveling kit. We talked about it. He's getting the tires through someone else. I don't know, maybe Sears or Tire Discount, wherever he's getting it from. But he wants me to install the leveling kit. So I'll figure, take you guys with for the ride on it, see what we got to do. Never really done a leveling kit on the new Gladiators. We'll see what we can do on it. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> so pretty much, it looks like what he brought me is uh, probably just the pucks. I looked in it, it's just they are just the pucks. Pretty, this is probably the most basic leveling kit you could probably buy out there from Rough Country. Um, and it's just rubber pucks, basically, is what it is. This kit comes with uh, it looks like uh, three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch, which will give you an inch and a half, you know, plus the isolator that's already on there. You know, you'll have to put that in there. I did kind of <clears throat> just sifter through the instructions here, but it looks pretty typical stuff, you know, drop the link. Uh, any kind of brake line that's in your way to kind of drop it down and all that, get that front spring out, pop these up in there, and then, you know, that'll give you your inch and a half on both sides. So we got one box. Pretty much all it came with is two pucks. Same box here. Uh, try to leave part numbers to this kit down in the description. But we'll get this thing all set up. I got the boring part done. Pretty much rack arm under it. Maybe get a quick measurement before and then uh, pull these tires off and we'll get, measure, get these taken care of and measure it afterwards. Getting a quick measurement of the suspension before. Let's see how high we stand from the ground to the fender. We'll call that around 37. So three foot one inch. You can see we're at 37 mark. And this thing, I, I did rack it so the suspension's not down as far as it should be but you get a pretty basic idea looking at this thing I kinda like the white but you could definitely tell that the back is a lot higher on these you know pretty much for the payload when you load these things up if you are loading them up but the back sits about you know we could call that 39 or whatever you guys are looking at my angle and I'm kinda measuring it from you know this body line here so it's looking pretty basic um, you know obviously you'll want to support the differential looks like we're gonna be disconnected the link here uh, nothing else really hindering us from dropping at least the driver side the driver side should be the easier side disconnect the uh, shock uh, maybe we'll disconnect the uh, lines here so we don't stretch them out depending on how far we got to drop it down Make sure all our lines got free. But I'm just going to go ahead and get at this thing. Get the screw jack. Support this uh, front end. And then just start pulling these bolts. But I can already tell now, being a brand new truck, not having any rust on there, this shouldn't take us too long either. So 10.50 in the morning. We're starting this. Start off by pulling this link, pulling the shock. See how far we get this front end down. Get the front end supported. 18 millimeter on the link, both sides of it. Drop the link, 
Drop the nut. Same thing for the shock, 18. Hardware. Right, shocks out. Next, I'm going to take out this 10 millimeter here to get these some slack on these lines and the vent tube for the differential. So we got some play there. That's looking good. Lines are looking good, free and clear. That's gonna go down with that. I'm gonna start dropping this a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is bump the rack, go up with the rack a little bit here. You guys, you guys stay over here and keep an eye on this, make sure we're good. came off of it there. Probably have to pry down a little bit. But the spring is becoming loose. This is probably going to be enough here in a second. Let's drop it down a little bit more. And I'm probably going to use a pry bar now. To just pull on it and then walk this spring out of this way. You guys get a better shot, better view on this side. Let's see, what do we see here? And the spring should just come out this direction here. You want to turn it a little bit and then just work its way out. And like I said, the driver side is probably going to be the easier side. Pull the isolator out. We are going to have to snip off these uh, little nubs here and then basically get the kit, pop the two in and put the spring back on. So we got the spring here. We got the two spacers here, and that's the isolator is just going to sit on the bottom here. Like I said, we're going to cut off these nubs, some side cuts here. Just cut these flush. After those are cut off, you'll stack the two pucks, get the isolator back on there. And this is going to go right back up where we pulled these out. All right, so here we go. So I'm anticipating I'll probably have to uh, pull this uh, front end down a bit when we do this to make up for the extra room. So I'll go ahead and get this screw jack out of the way. Looks like it's easier to put them up one at a time here. Get them around the bump stop. That's one. There's two. And then the isolator is going to go last here. And then we'll just have to work the spring back in. Now the spring does sit, you know, a certain way on the perch here. You got to make sure that, you know, the end of it does match up with the perch. But first you basically just want to get it up in there. I'm going to have to pull down on Once you get it in, you want to just turn it and get the bottom sitting where it needs to be. I'll show you guys a close up of that. You can see the bottom, you know, line up with the end of the perch there where that's supposed to sit. And then just make sure the top's lined up also. Get our screw jack back under it. everything back into place here. I can see the spring start to seat a little bit. We'll 
we'll just keep going until we get everything back in place. After that, got the shock lined up with the hole. Probably a little too high there. Get that lined up. The bolt back through with the nut. I am going to tighten this right away. 18 millimeter. That nuts and secure. We'll do the same with the link. Just use a little pry bar, pry up on the sway bar so you can get that lined up. Tighten in there. So that's pretty much the driver's side wrapped up. Got the two spacers in with the isolator. Make sure the bottom of the spring's sitting on the perch. Tighten everything back up. We'll put this 10 millimeter back in here. Everything back in place, secure. We'll go on to the passenger side. All right, so setting everything up for the passenger side. This side is gonna be a little harder because you got the track bar. You know, the sway bar's a little different on this side with the link and all that stuff. Plus there's less, less travel on the passenger side of these Jeeps. But we're gonna see what it is. Got the screw jack set up in place. Same thing, we're gonna start off, we're gonna pull this link off, we're gonna pull the strut off, and then we'll see how much play we got. Got the snap on, 762. Let's see if this handles this, 18 millimeter. I'm gonna try to break it loose first. There we go. Little bit of a struggle, crack it loose first. Get it out, no problem here. Make sure this, the little nut doesn't fall through. All right, get this shock taken care of. Get the steering wheel turned all the way. millimeter up here just for added safety not even 100% sure if you have to do this but I do not want to rip an ABS line or anything like that we'll start screwing down see what happens here this side definitely looks like it's not going to be as easy as the driver's side we got all this in the way here I'm actually going to turn the steering wheel back also See what we got going on here. All right, bump up the rack some. You guys keep an eye on it. All right, the whole load's off. Screw jack off to the side here. Let's see what we're looking like. See if we get this spring, you know, maybe out of this area here. Get it off the perch. We're pretty good as far as our lines go. This one's here a little tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that clip there. There we go, plenty of slack. We're using our Mueller Coops little Christmas tree popper. These are great little tools. All right, get that broken loose. Walk it out here. Not as bad as I thought. Here we go, guys. So same thing on this side. There's our kit. Basically what comes in it, like I said, probably the most basic kit you could do on these leveling kits. It does come with brochure. Obviously, every company supports these Jeeps for aftermarket. If you're looking for it, they probably have it. And then uh, as instructions that we never read for something like this, Got a little rough country, uh, looks like a uh, warning to driver, and then a little service reminder sticker in there. I don't need anything there. I'd say the hardest part is 
pushing these up through here, the whole job. You guys could probably, uh, you know, spray this to make it easier, or you know, maybe put a little grease on here so they slide up a little easier. I guess I feel like struggling today. That's the second one, and then the isolator here. Get this spring back going, and this spring, you know, is uh, obviously top and bottom. You can see the wider ones at the bottom, and then you know the it, closer intercoil is the top part. And the same thing, line up the perch. Put these up in there. I am going to try to pull down on this with my body weight first as I'm shoving it back in there. If not, we'll have to get a pry bar and figure out what we're going to do because we're by ourselves. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. That just popped back in place. You can see. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, tighten the link up, tighten the shock up. We're good to go. So I got everything tightened up on the passenger side, cleaned up the tools, just pretty much I made sure all the bolts I loosened were tight again. Uh, that's pretty much it. Let's see, uh, see where we're at with time. 11.19, so all but maybe 25 minutes it took us. Can't remember what it, uh, maybe a half hour, I can't remember where we started. 10.50 or so, that's with filming, so not too bad. Half hour of work, get this thing, uh, Curious to see what kind of lift we got on this. We'll get these tires on there. We'll get back with you guys with the uh, tape measure. All right, so let the Jeep down. You guys just got to remember too, in doing this kit, like I said, this is probably the most basic kit you can get for these. Um, you know, your front shocks only have so much travel. I think there's an extra, you know, three inches of travel or so with the stock suspension. So adding an inch and a half, obviously, you know, we're only gonna have about another inch and a half lift of, uh, you know, actual play in the, in the front shocks. But that's before the front end settled. Here's the after measurement. And that did pretty much bump us up exactly, you know, an inch and a half. We're at 37 before, we're almost at 39 now. I think once it settles, we probably won't even get a full inch and a half out of it, but you know, it definitely did level it out. I'll take this thing for a ride, show you guys, you know, and after the front end settles and all that stuff. There's passenger side, you know, pretty much 39. Where I'm looking at this side sitting up a little higher, but you know, like we said, we gotta have the, get this thing for a test drive have it settle. So here we go after a quick test drive. But as you can see, we sure do have a lot more clearance. Matches the back now, leveled it out. So that's a quick one for you guys. You know, not too bad for a leveling kit. Jeeps, I always enjoy working on Jeeps and uh, you know, who doesn't enjoy working on a, a brand new 2020, you know, vehicle, anything for that matter with no rust, no salt, no grime, you know, hasn't been beat up you know every, there hasn't been a hundred other techs on the front end of that thing we know everything else is tight easy peasy you know get them in get them out definitely like the weight looks of these things but like i said still got mixed uh still got mixed feelings about them we'll see after a few more years maybe they'll grow on me or you know after i see what guys do to them as far as modifying them and all that stuff if i'm gonna end up liking them but like i said my most uh gripe with them is the powertrain you know they should have probably put uh put a better engine in it or something like that so wrapping this one up guys, as always, like, comment, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we will catch you in the next one. Signing out.